Hey everybody, welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna start learning about composite functions or composition of functions. And here's the idea. What we're gonna learn about a little bit later is exponentials and logarithms and how they are inverses. And if you compose them, well, they're gonna cancel each other out. And we're gonna learn about that, but it takes composite functions and inverses to finally get there. So that's why we're learning this. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is, how you do it, uh, and then we'll talk about the domain of composite functions in the next video. So here's what a composition of functions actually does. It takes one function, opens up the variable, and shoves an entire other function inside it where that variable is. So really, it's just replacing a variable of one function with an entire other function. That's what that statement means. So when one entire function is substituted into the variable of another. The notation looks a little weird if you've never seen it before. If we have two functions, f and g of x, then a composition of functions says f of g of x, and that's how you pronounce it. And this says f of g of x, but it really shows you what we are doing. So this little open O there, it stands for f of g of x. It's not multiplication. That's not what composition of functions does. This is talking about what this is saying. Now, what is this saying? It says f of g of x, but here's what it's saying. This says in the function f, the output g of x is the input for f of x. It sounds a little weird, but basically if you look at the notation, it's saying this x is replaced with this entire function. f of x becomes f of g of x. The entire function g replaces the variable x. So we're going to show that. I'm going to refer back to this when we get to plugging in some numbers over here or evaluating uh, our composite functions, but that's basically what we're doing. So I'll give you the Leonard technique on how you do composition functions. You all know that Taylor Swift is really good at math. At least her songs reference that. So we're going to talk about the blank space as far as composite functions goes. The best way to think about them. So here, here we go. Let's suppose we have two functions, f and g. 2x squared minus 5 and 1 minus 3x squared, respectively. Here's what a composite function asks you to do. It says, I want you to take a look at the first function. This first function is what you were composing upon. So it says, I'm going to look at f of x. I'm going to read f of x, 2x squared minus 5. Now, we know about functions. We know that the variable of the function, the independent variable, is where you, the only place where you can actually plug something into. So in 2x squared minus 5, x, that variable, is the only place that you can plug anything in. If you want to plug in 5, you put in 5. You'll plug in 7, you put in 7. Plug in anything you want, you plug in anything you want into that x, including another function. And so what a composite function asks you is take f and open it up. Allow yourself to plug something into it. Create for yourself a blank space wherever you have variables. So we would keep our 2. But the x, that variable, is openable, if you, if you will. Create a blank spot. That's really what a variable stands for anyway, right? Something that you can evaluate into, something you can plug into. Well, we're allowing ourselves that with this blank space. In your head right now, this should signify the same thing that that does. This says 2, something you can plug in, 4 squared minus 5. This says 2, something you can plug in, 4 squared minus 5. They represent the same thing. So in a composition of functions, we look at the first function, f. We're going to open that with a blank space. And then whatever I plug into, whatever I want to plug in for f, I put it right here. Well, that's what this is saying. So again, if I want to plug in something like 3 or 5 or 7 or negative 5 or whatever, I would put it here just like I put it in for the x. This is the place where you put it in for, for x. And if you remember back to how I, I taught you to evaluate, I always do this, don't I? I always take what I'm evaluating or the function I'm evaluating, I write a parenthesis and I put a number in there. In this case, we're writing parentheses and putting another function. So f opens up. And this second function is what they're telling you to put inside of that. So I'm looking at my comp composition function. I'm saying my first function is f. I'm writing my f with a blank space. I'm allowing myself to plug in for a variable. And then the second function listed is what you put inside of your parentheses. The entire thing. Do not separate it. It's not separable. It's 1 minus 3x squared. That's what g of x is. And so that is what I'm evaluating inside the function f. This has taken one function, g of x, and substituted it into the variable of another function, 
f of x. That's all there is to composition of functions. Now we do have to simplify it, but I, I'm going to pause for a second to make sure that you're seeing it. You should be seeing that f, the first function, got opened with a blank space. g of x, the second function listed, got inputted into that, got evaluated into it, got compo composed into the f of x. Now we do need to simplify this. How you simplify these functions is really important. So we want to make sure that we simplify any exponents first that happen. So we're not going to be distributing two. We're going to be distributing one minus three x squared times one minus three x squared due to the nature that it is being squared. So we're going to take a moment and do that. We can think of this as one minus three x squared times one minus three x squared. We should be pretty good at, at, uh, at distributing at this point. So we would get one minus six x squared plus nine x to the fourth. If we were to distribute that, that's one minus three minus three, that's minus six x squared and then plus nine x squared. Remember that we still have a two and we still have a minus 5, so when we distribute, we get 2 minus 12x squared plus 18x to the 4th minus 5. And if we combine some like terms, we're going to get, and we can put it in order also. We could have done that up here, we just didn't do it. I gave you a problem that I just thought of. And so we, if we put this in order, then we can put 18x to the fourth minus 12x squared minus 3, if we combine like terms appropriately. I'm going to erase this. This is just my simplification. This is all we've done is simplify this and make this a little bit more usable, a little bit more friendly in standard form instead of some quasi-factored uh, form of a polynomial. So we're going to have 18x to the fourth minus 12x squared minus 3. This is what the composition f of g of x created for us. It's a new function. Now, in the next video, we're going to explore what the domain is going to be, and I'm going to ruin it right now. The domain of the composition of functions is a combination of the inside functions domain combined with the domain of what you get at the end. So we look at two places. What are you plugging in? Find the domain of what you're plugging in. Find the domain of what you get at the very end and combine those. So this domain would be Domain here, uh, well, there's no square roots. Uh, there's no denominators that have variables in them. Um, there's no logarithms. So our domain is all real numbers. There's no square roots here. There's no denominators that have variables in them. There's no logarithms. Our domain is also all real numbers. So domain of all real numbers combined with the domain of all real numbers says our composition also has a domain of all real numbers. We'll explore that a, a lot more in the next video because we'll have some more difficult compositions. So this is what f of g of x stands for. It's just taking one function inside the other function. Let's move on to the next one. Let's take a look at g of f of x. Now, g of f of x is not, in general, going to be the same composition as f of g of x. They're not, if you want to think about it as commutative, they're not commutative. You cannot reverse these and get the same thing except for one condition. I know that I'm, I always teach you before we get there. I'm teaching about inverses right now. If your composition is the same, f of g or g of f, what it means is that those two functions are inverses. We'll talk about that when we get to inverses. It's a big deal. Um, it's important for us to understand that. So it's the only time your composition can be reversed and get the same thing out. And that thing, I guarantee, will just be x. And that's how you test whether you have inverses or not. We'll see that in the next video, too. But in the meantime, we're going to explore what g of f of x means. So a composition says, take a look at the first function that they reference. In this case, this is g of x. We're going to write g of x to give ourselves a place for us to plug in. So I'm going to look at g of x. I'm going to replace the variable, or every instance of the variable, with parentheses. I need to be able to plug something into that function, and the variable is the place where you do it. So I'm going to take my 1, leave it, my 3, leave it, and x is the only place, a variable is the only place you can plug something in for. So I'm going to create a blank space, which allows me to plug in for that variable. If I wanted to find g of 2, I'd plug in 2 there. 
That's the same thing. Or g of negative 7, I plug in negative 7 there. In this case, the composition says I want g of f. I want to evaluate f into that function. So what I want to do is take my function f, and this says open up g, I've done it. Take your function f, I want to take my function f and evaluate it inside the function g. So I have my blank space. It says write the appropriate name, write f of x in this case. What this has done is this, this has taken the function f of x right here and put it inside the function g right here. That's all a composition does. If this is making sense to you, you're golden. You know exactly what a composition of functions really does. It takes your first function, opens it up, basically replaces your variable with a blank space, and then takes your second function and pl plugs it in there, just kind of forces it in there. The entire function, all of this in that variable. That's exactly what this technique does. Now we have to simplify, so I'm going to be a little bit quicker about this. We're going to distribute 2x squared minus 5 quantity squared. If we do that, we would get 4x to the fourth minus 20x squared plus 25. So I'm thinking of this as 2x squared minus 2x squared. That's 4x to the fourth minus 10x squared minus another 10x squared is where we get that from, and then plus 25. But keep in mind, we also need to distribute the 3 which means some sign changes. So negative 12x to the fourth plus 60x squared minus 75. If we combine some like terms, and we're going to write this in order here, we're going to get a negative 12x to the fourth plus 60x squared minus 74. Now we could go and do things like factoring if we need to, but this is where we can stop. This is a, a simplified version of the composition of functions g of f of x. Notice this is not the same as that. They're completely different because these two functions are not inverses. So I'm trying to teach you that as we go. That way when we get there and say, hey, if you compose two inverses, they're going to give you x. Everything's going to cancel out. If you compose two inverses backwards, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be x. I'm going to start teaching you that as we go. So let's go ahead and I'm going to rewrite this. That way we have this a little more concisely after we simplified it. So g of f of x that composition is exactly what we have here. Okay, so we're going to move on just a little bit. We're going to get some sort of sometimes awkward looking compositions. So let's take a look at f of f of x. What that f of f of x? It almost sounds like you're stuttering a little bit. f of f of x. What in the world does that mean? That means that we're going to take the first function f, and inside the variable for f, we're going to place the whole function f again. So if you follow the technique I'm, I teach you, the whole blank space ideology, if you will, it says take your first function f, just ignore this for a second. Just look at your first function. What I'm telling you is look here, and I want you to write that function with a blank space. Every place you have a variable, have a blank space of the parentheses now. So the first function f, 2x squared minus 5, we're going to have 2 blank space squared minus 5. That is what the function f says. So our composition says look here, Rewrite it with blank spaces. Done. Now look at the second function. The second function is f. Who cares? All this is telling you is what you want to put in the function that you just opened. We open this one, put this one inside of it. So now we're going to look at the second function. What's the second function? Well, the second function is f again, so we're going to look there. f is 2x squared minus 5. It says I want you to take this function f and put it inside of the parentheses that you just created. Might look a little funny. This is not an inverse. Uh, this is a com composition of a function onto itself. It, in general, is not going to give you an inverse. There are some special cases where it can, but in general, it can't. And so we're going to distribute this, but before we do it, we're going to check our work. Did we take our first function, open it, 2 parentheses squared minus 5? Yes. Did we take our second function, whatever it is, and plug it in the whole entire function into the blank space, which 
represents the variable. Yes, we did. Now we simplify that. So when we do, we'll have our 2. We already did this distribution, 2x squared minus 5 squared, uh, and that gave us Give us 4x squared minus 20x squared plus 25. We're almost done. We're going to distribute the 2. And then we're going to combine some like terms. This is already in order for us. So 8x to the 4th minus 40x squared plus 50. And then subtracting 5 from that gives us our 45. And so if we write that, this is what the composition f of f of x is. What I'd like you to do is actually see if you can pause the video and try g of g of x. If you have, well, you should, you should if you have it. Um, if you have, what we should get out of this is the idea that this composition is asking you to look at g of x. That's why it's listed first, is look here, and I want you to replace the variables and whatever function is first with a parentheses. So I'm looking at my g of x. I'm not even looking here yet. I'm not looking at the second g. I don't even really care about that. I'm looking at the first function. I'm focused on this. I'm opening up the variable with parentheses. Now, now I take the blinders off. I know that this is represented by this with a blank space, this place where I can plug stuff into. Now I look at my second function that's listed in my composition. I go, okay, I've opened up my first one. Now I look here and I just replace whatever's in the parentheses. I replace that blank spot or plug it into a blank spot with my second function. My second function is also g of x. So I look here and go, okay, I'm just taking this entire thing. I'm putting it here. This is what g of g of x should look for, and here's what it does practically. We're going to see this as we go through here. What a composition does, it basically runs an input through two functions in a very specific way. It runs an input through the rightmost function first, and then whatever you get out of this, the output of this function becomes the input for your first function. I'm going to show you right here. What is your input here? Because this is what f of g of x stands for. It, it, it's this. What's your input here? Well, your input is x, but that's only for the function g. So this is take your input, plug it into g. Whatever you get out of that, oh wait, that becomes the input for f. So the output here, g of x stands for an output. The output of g of x acts as the input for the function f. And that's what this is doing for us. This is saying this, in, this function g, I'm going to plug into x, right? It's going to have to run through this function one time. The output of that acts as the input for this next time I run through g. It's a very interesting concept. If we simplify this, we're going to distribute 1 minus 3x times 1 minus 3x. Of course, you should have caught me on this one. Hopefully, I can't take an excuse on that one. Just completely missed that power, too. Uh, but at least I caught it. So we're going to get 1 minus 6x squared. Plus 9x to the 4. So I'm thinking 1 minus 3x squared times 1 minus 3x squared. That's 1 minus 6x squared and then plus 9x to the 4. We're going to distribute the negative 3 again. we get minus 3 plus 18x squared and minus 27x to the fourth power. If we combine some like terms and write this in order, we're going to have negative 27x to the fourth first. Plus 18x squared and then minus 2 when we combine some like terms. So we're going to write that now. And this is really every permutation of 
our compositions we can do. We've got f of g, which takes g and plugs into f. We've taken g of f, which takes f and plugs into g. f of f, which takes f onto itself. g of g, which takes g onto itself. And we've simplified everything. Done a lot of work. Um, just so you know, the domain of every one of these compositions is all real numbers. Because we didn't develop any fractions or square roots or logarithms, and the domain of both of my initial functions is all real numbers. So the domain for all of these is all real numbers. We're, we're going to see some different things in the next video. Now we're going to work on evaluating some composition of functions. There's two ways to do this. So let's take a look at f of g of 1 and see what this is really asking us to do. I'm going to give you both of these ways. The, um, the not really having to think about it part, the not really having to think about it way to do this is identify which of these compositions you have over here and just plug in the value. So if we take f of g of 1, this says, well, wait a minute. We've worked really hard to figure out f of g of x, right? And x is our input. So if I change this x to 1, this is saying f of g of 1 and f of g of x, I can just evaluate f of g of x for 1. So basically just plug in 1 to the f of g of x that you have simplified, and that will work. So if I take f of g of 1, put in our 1 here for f of g of x, that would be 18 minus 12 minus 3. Well, 18 minus 12, that's 6, minus 3 is 3. So I should be getting 3. Now, the other way to do this, a little, little bit more thought, but possibly easier, because some of these exponents are fairly large, possibly easier. Here's what we would do. We would take the 1, and this has to run through these two functions in this order. 1 acts as, and we already talked about right here, 1 acts as the input for the second function listed. Why the second one? f of g of x says we want f of g of x. That second function is your initial thing you plug into. That is your initial input. You can see it right here. The second function inside is what you'd have to plug into first. Second function is inside what you'd have to plug in first, and then it runs through the first function. So for f of g of 1, you run 1 as an evaluation, uh, you evaluate 1 into g first. So if we put this into g, then this would be 1 minus 3 times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1, 3 times 1 is 1. This would be negative 2. So if I did g of 1, we get negative 2. That output, that output of g, becomes the input for f, the first function you, you deal with. So now we say, okay, I plugged in 1 for g, it was negative 2. Negative 2 gets now run through as, as evaluated in f. So negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3 again. So we did g of 1. We got negative 2, and then f of negative 2. We take our input into our second function. That output becomes the input for our first function. That's the second way to go about doing it. Either way works. We got three um, in either case. It really doesn't matter, but you can see that this way requires a little more thought. This was already thought out. That's why you're able to just plug it in. Uh, this requires a little more thought, but it can be a little bit easier when some of these exponents are fairly large. Let's take a look at the next few of them. We're going to do it fairly quick. So if we evaluate g of f of x for negative 2, and that's what this is asking us to do. Go here, g of f, plug in 2 in that simplified version. You can actually do it here too, but you plug it in here. So if I evaluate for 2, I'm going to get 2 to the 4th power 16. 16 times negative 12 is negative 196. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 60 is 240. Minus 74, all of that's going to give you a negative 26. Now, is it easier to plug this 2 into f, figure out the output, use that output as an input for g? Maybe. Let's try that. So what this says is take your 2, it acts as an input for f of x based on what we know about what's going on here. So 2 gets put into your second function, whatever it is. In this case, it's f. So think that this would be g of f of 2. This is what is going on right now. We have to find f of 2 first and then g of that output. f of 2 is an output. It's the output of the function f when you have an input of 2. So take 2, plug it in here. 
Uh, that's 4 times 8, and 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3. So f of 2 is 3. Now we want to find g of 3. So f of 2 gave us 3, and now we're finding g of whatever that output is. If we plug in 3, evaluate uh, 3 squared is 9, 3 times 9 is 27, 1 minus 27 is negative 26. It's the same thing that we would get. And it has to be the same if you've done this correctly. I hope that's making sense. I hope you're seeing the interplay between these composition functions that f of whatever this is, that's your, you're inputting this into the second function first, the output of which acts as your input for your first function. Now let's do the last couple. A little bit strange to plug something into itself, but that's exactly what this asks us to do. So f of f of negative 1 says take negative 1, evaluate it in whatever this function is. In this case, here's f of f. So I can take negative 1 and put it here and here. Now, because this is an even function, oh, you should verify that. Even powers, if I plug it into negative, it's not going to affect anything. This would give us 8 minus 40 plus 45. So that looks like that's going to be 13. Or we can do it this way. Take negative 1, evaluate it into your second function. Use this as the input for this function. So f of negative 1, well, that's going to give me negative 3. I evaluated f of negative 1, that's negative 3. And now my negative 3, the output of my first evaluation becomes the input for my second evaluation. So f of negative 3, my output. 9 times 2, that's uh, 18 minus 5, that's 13. And the last one, g of g of 0. If we go to g of g, we've already simplified this. If I plug in 0, I get negative 2. That's nice. If I want to do it differently, g of g of 0 says take g and evaluate it with the output of g when you plug in 0. That's technically the exact way that this is, this is going on. So it says evaluate g of 0 and then use that output as the input for g again. So g of 0 is 1. You did this, it was that. Now that output that you just got acts as the input for g again. So we're evaluating 1, it looks like negative 2. Because we have 1 squared, uh, 1 minus 3 times 1 is negative 2. That's exactly what we've got. It matches up. We know that this is correct. I hope that I've explained composition of functions for you. Um, hopefully you understand the blank space idea where you take your first function, open up every variable with the parentheses. That's a blank space, something you plug into. Take your second function, plug it in, and then simplify. And simplifying is actually the hardest part here. Uh, evaluating, you can do it a couple ways, and we've gone through that. So in the next video, we'll talk more about domain. So what happens when you don't have domains that are all real numbers all of the time? How do you represent that? So I'll see you for another video.